Hello everyone, and hang on to your hats because I got a longer one for you today. We're making a Chibi Tronics light card for the first time I've ever tried this. So this is what it comes with. A couple of batteries, some lights, and copper tape. We're going to use some Nina Desert Storm, some Bristol Smooth cardstock, this is a Spellbinders die called a Curved Rectangle. And I used the largest one. This is um, Ranger's, uh, I can't remember, it's Bubble, Bubble something. It'll be listed below. But I, um, I'm using some delicate surface tape to adhere this to the stencil and some masking paper we're going to do some ink blending on this bank background. So I had this great idea when I saw the Your Next Stamp Hugs, Bugs and Kisses stamp set that I wanted to make a lightning bug card. I'm using Versamagic uh, wheat and some, uh, I think it's scattered straw. It'll be listed below. Anyway, I wanted to make a lightning bug card. So this is this is my vision for the lightning bugs. If you're not in this area, you probably have no idea what I'm talking about. But as it becomes a little bit darker here in the evening time, in the summer, um, these things come out called what we call lightning bugs. They light up and the kids run around and catch them. And so as soon as I saw this stamp set, I had to have it. I had to create this card. If you stay tuned towards the end, you'll see where Dexter is trying to catch some lightning bugs. And it, it was just the perfect little video clip to add to the end of this card. So I'm still using Versamagic uh, chalk ink in various colors to create this bubble effect on the background. Um, we're going to do some more ink blending so it's not such a severe bubble look. I mean, it looks good the way that it is, but I wanted it to be a little bit more subtle. So we're going to continue to add some ink. I think this is tea leaves and key lime in Versa Magic. And I'm just trying to keep it lighter towards the center. Um, this is for your next stamps color and sketch challenge number 70 and I'll insert a clip of the sketch and the color um, combo here while we're talking about it and if you get a chance before the challenge ends to come over and play with us um, it's a lot of fun I love doing sketch and color challenges So I'm using wheat and I think the scattered straw. I think that's right. And just to create the background and to go along with the color combination of the challenge. So we're going to manipulate this stamp here. This is a firefly, which is sounds similar to a lightning bug, but it's not. So we're gonna use this Memento Tuxedo Black Marker and we're just gonna color in the parts that we want, which is the head and the body parts of the wings and just a little bit of its butt. I'm not sure what it's called. I'm going to call it a butt. It's probably not a butt. So I'm just picking and choosing which lines I want to stamp. And as you can see, it turns out fine. And using the Misty, if you needed to re-stamp it, you were there to do it. Um, so I'm using the other end of the marker, now the pointy end, to finish off the wings because I shortened them to make them look like a lightning bug and the tail or the butt, the bug butt. So I'm using the sentiment, um, some buggy loves you and I'm stamping that in Versamark or Versifying Onyx Black ink directly to that that panel that we created. I'm also going to stamp the heart from that set. This is going to be where we push the light to activate the light. 
So I'm using Nuvo. Uh, I think this is like red slippers, slippers, red dazzle, bedazzled slippers, something. <laughs> it's a red. It's the glitter one. And we're using some Copic markers to color in the bug. And this is super simple coloring. He's black. He's a bug. And then his tail is yellow or his light, light, lightning butt, his lightning butt. And then I used some bees, uh, B000 and B0000 to make his wings look translucent. At least I think that they look translucent. So we're using the coordinating die, and even though we took away some of those parts, we're gonna use the die, and then we're gonna fussy cut where we need to continue to cut off things. So he's perfectly cut out except for the butt and the wings. And I'm a terrible fussy cutter, so if I can do this, you can do this. Just go slow and try not to cut off his head. That's what I'm telling myself anyway. There, it turned out. So this is where things get complicated. And I just watched uh, Jennifer McGuire's video of how to put together a Chibitronics card. And so I'm basically following her instructions. So I've created a little house, as she called it, and marking things so that I know where to put things. <laughs> and um, I'm marking where the light needs to go. And if you notice that bigger hand in the video, yep, that's my husband, the engineer. He had to help me because even though I watched her video, I was still confused and I wanted to make sure that I did it and he needed to help me in the end because I didn't do it right <laughs> so just take your time and it'll it'll work out so I'm marking the positive and negative parts on the light and now I'm running the copper tape to the positive and the negative where the light is gonna be and I learned that you cannot cross these that's what he's saying right now don't cross these so I didn't And I was confused about it, how much you could bend this copper tape in order to get the connection to continue, but apparently it can withstand a good amount of uh, bending and crinkling. So don't be afraid, just do it. and you can use new parts. So if you run out of copper tape, then just get yourself some more. And that works. So I'm just using my finger at this point to smooth everything down, but it didn't work. You really do need to use the bone folder to get a really smooth connection. And also, <laughs> this is where my husband had to help me. You have to make sure that the positive and the negative on the light are securely touching the copper tape. And that's where I messed up. The, the bottom part wasn't secure enough. So here we're adding a little bit more copper tape to get it to work. Ta-da! And there, it's working. Can you see? Isn't that great? So I'm just marking where I want to punch a hole to let a little bit more light through. And I got so mad because I clipped the end of the panel, the, the side of the panel, and it made like two little marks on the side of the panel. So I was angry about that, but I was not starting over at this point. So I'm using 
as recommended in the video to do three layers of foam tape and that's what I'm doing right now I'm creating a little house for the battery to live and it's going to be three foam tapes tall I wonder if, what else we can measure in foam tape measurement oh yeah that, that that's only two foam tapes high oh no that's only one foam tape foam tape high people think I'm nuts I'm sure I'm not going to make you watch me do three layers of foam tape on this whole card. So once I get the three layers on there, I just rip it off the backing paper and I'm going to secure that top panel to what looks like a circuit board. And it works. I can't stop pushing the thing. So this card base is slightly smaller than A2 size card base. It's about three and a half by eight. Or three and a half by seven, I think. So I wanted to add some um, Jelly Roll black glaze pen to his little antennas, his eyes, his hands and feet. And I'm also going to use some Nouveau Drops to create what I think is like a little trail, like a bug flying trail. And that's it. That's my card for today. Um, I hope you like it, and I hope you enjoy the little clip of Dexter catching lightning bugs at the end. You get it. No, I don't know how. You gotta try to catch them. I can run and get them. Mm hmm. What, what run and get them. You might need a little help, Daddy. You gotta wait until you see him light up, and then you walk forward towards him. 